inside the new home of the Rangers, Globe Life Field in Arlington. We bring you Friday baseball on the show. It's the Kansas City Royals and the Texas Rangers. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Just about set to go now. And starting in this one, Jose Ureña. And Singy, we were talking earlier about how he's doing a great job navigating through tough spots. I've just been so impressed with when it seems like there's more pressure, he's more calm and settles in. He's done an incredible job with runners in scoring position. Most guys, they get a little tight, they start to aim the baseball, but for some reason, he gets looser, the ball comes out of his hand with more life, and he's able to wiggle off the hook of you know tough situations and get his team back in the dugout. Got him swinging. Oh, that slider wasn't even close to the strike zone, and he got him to chase. That's just a bad approach right there. Either he was looking for something else and got completely fooled, or he was sitting all over the slider and just couldn't resist the temptation. But, man, really expanded right there and didn't have a chance of making contact with that pitch. Now here's Bobby Witt, Jr. The why to kick the pitch. The other way, low. Tosses to the pitcher, covering the bag. And Witt is out. And here now, the lineup for the Royals. This is an offense, Chris, that's having a hard time scoring runs right now. Yeah, sometimes things just aren't going to click. And unfortunately, what happens is players press, they try to do a little bit more, and they get out of their game. You've got to let the game come to you. If you chase it, it's going to run from you. So this is a team that just needs to calm down, relax, and understand that they're going to come out of this. That's down and in. Two out, space is empty. That one fouled off, two and two. That's the third, Wenzel. Tosses across oh. the first. Royals set down in order. Nothing doing for the Royals. And now the Rangers will get their shot in a scoreless ball game. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Back in Arlington. So here's the lefty, Cole Reagans. Well, he's putting together a really nice season on the mound. ERA in the low threes. Very respectable when you consider guys are looking to do damage. They're not trying to just walk and hit singles. They're trying to hit homers and draw walks and score runs. So. When you have a guy that can limit the other team from scoring more than a few runs, that's really tough to beat game in and game out. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. The pitch. Swings and misses. It's a strikeout. Pulled the string of the changeup. So now it's Corey Seager. Bounce to the right side. Gets to it with a slide. And they get the out. And now we take a look at the Rangers lineup. One guy leading the way offensively for this club right now, Adolis Garcia. And he's leading him in runs batted in this season, which tells me this guy is able to slow things down when it seems like there's a little bit of pressure. And he's looking at it as an opportunity to do damage. You know, a lot of guys, they see runners on base and they get big. They feel like all this pressure, I've got to get these runs in. But somehow he seems to settle into these situations. So watch out when he comes to the play. Waters right there to make the grab. And that will end the inning. Scoreless after one. Back at Globe Life Field. New inning getting started. And now it's Salvador Perez to the plate. This guy is an elite level hitter, especially considering contact, just the ability to hit for average. What you really like, though, stays in against those righties, and that's not so easy as a right-handed batter. Breaking ball inside. Ball three. There's some players, for whatever reasons, they seem to just face a slew of right-handed pitchers and their comfort level increased so much that they actually prefer to face that same side thrower in a tough situation.
outside, and that is ball four. Yeah, most guys struggle against the same side, whether it's left on left or right on right, and this guy's an exception. Here's Adam Frazier. Runner on the go. Swing and a miss. One ball. Throw to second. Well, I think that was a hit and run right there. When you look at how far that pitch was out of the zone and the hitter still trying to put wood on it, put it in play, that tells you that they had something going. But unfortunately, it was a good job of execution by the pitcher and the catcher to get that out of the zone and then throw out the runner at second base. Really nice job behind the dish. One down, base is empty. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. That exists. The second really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Man at first with one gone. And now the rookie second baseman, Nick Lofton. That one's in there. And that is strike two. And another ball. Mike Fillmore, our plate umpire. Very consistent with his zone, Chris. Gets a lot of praise for that. He does, Boog. And I think that with any umpire, you really just want them to be consistent. Fillmore's a guy that does a good job back there in that way. So people around the league really appreciate his consistency. Fans don't really understand the familiarity and relationship players and coaches have with umpires. I mean, you see them a lot. Yeah, but they're all out there trying to do their best and perform at a high level. So when you respect that, I think, over time, you can develop a relationship with them. MJ Melendez, the next to hit. And yeah, the right-hander deals. Pitch is in for a strike. Going to count one and two. As the game has moved along, we see more and more information supplied by teams about the umpires. I've been in clubhouses where they have pictures of all four umpires, nicknames, hometowns, and as well, hobbies listed, just so you can kind of small talk the umpire a little bit. <laughs> That's great. It's in and out of his glove. But in time, nice job to stay with it to end the inning. So one left for Kansas City. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Bottom of the second. Nathaniel Lowe up to hit. The first baseman. It's a 1-1. And there's a the ball. Two and one the count now. He hasn't seen a fastball yet, but you've got to be ready to hit one because you doubt the pitcher wants this to go to a 3-1 count. The 2-1. Fastball for a strike. That misses the zone. Three and two now. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just try to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Yeah, that's a tough pitch to stay on. You don't want to get beat inside. And as you see that pitch continue to run away from you, by the time it's in the catcher's mitt, you think it's a ball off the plate away. And now here is Wyatt Lankford into center. Gets under it. And there's two away. Here's Leody Tavares. Swings and misses, struck him out. One, two, three, go the Rangers. We'll move to the third with no score. And welcome back to the ballpark. Drew Waters stands in. 
six. Drew Water. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. And a count one and two. One ball, two strikes. And Whoa, another ball. Right and he deals. And now, now it's filled up. Really good take, especially with two strikes. That's a laser base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Well, patience and discipline paid off right there as he got into an advantage count. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle, allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer, and he hit the ball on the screws. And now a chance to maybe get creative on offense with good speed on first. And now it's Kyle Isbell. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. This one in the air right field sizes this one up. He's got it. And there's one down. Now that third baseman, Michael Garcia. Back to the top of the lineup. Here's the third baseman. The one one is fouled off. Righty delivers. And yeah, that skips in the dirt. Well, with the amount of pitches that can end up in the dirt, a good secondary lead doesn't have to get away from the catcher. But if you're anticipating based off the trajectory, get yourself in the scoring position. To third, not in time. And it's runners at the corners with one gone. Maybe a little out front of the pitch right there, but he squared it up pretty good, and he kept it inside the line. And just a really nice job on the other side by the defense to hold that to a long single. Runners on the corners with one gone. And now the shortstop, Bobby Witt Jr. Kicks and deals. And that's off the inside edge. Now two balls and a strike. Brothers at the corners, one away. We're here in the top half of inning number three. Base hit into the outfield. And they'll score first. It's one zip. Well, there you go. The RBI machine. Another clutch run scoring at bat. Yeah, he's been so good in these situations. Call it clutch if you want, but his resume speaks for itself. First and second, one out. Vinny Pasquantino steps in for the Royals. On the ground right side, four, six, he's out. three, double play. And the inning is over. But they pick up one run on the RBI single, and the home team down a run. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. Set for the bottom of the third, and the batter will be the shortstop, Ezekiel Duran. The 1 1. Late on that fastball. One ball, two strikes. Hacks and misses, it's a strikeout. Very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner when with two strikes you just struggle to put the ball in play. You don't even have to get a hit at that point. You can help your team just by reaching on an error, but some way you got to find a way to shorten up the swing and put the ball in play next time. Here's Andrew Kisner. Pitch in the dirt and a count two and one. One out, base is empty. There's a swing and a miss. 
It's amazing to look up and see 88 miles per hour on that changeup. Back in the day, that was a pretty good fastball, but with high velocities these days, that speed differential is right where it needs to be. Pasquantino pulls it down, and there's two gone. Batting nine, the third baseman. And now, Davis Wenzel. The wind of the pitch. On the ground. And it goes just foul. The Royals up by a run here in the last half of the third. That one not close. Two and two. Well, he might have to look for a different put away pitch right here 2 2 he's already seen the curveball a couple of times in this at bat so might have it timed up and ready for it foul ball another 2 2 upcoming now fly ball to right center it falls in and that's a hit the throw into second and he'll pull into second with two gone. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. Put a really nice balanced swing on it, and when you can rope one into the gap like that, you're thinking extra bases from the first couple of steps out of the box, and he'll feel real good about that one. So the Rangers' batting order turns over, and the batter now on the ground to third. Sends it across to first, and Simeon is out. Inning over. One left for Texas. They still trail 1-0. And we're back as we go to the top of the fourth. And to the plate for Kansas City, Salvador Perez. The pitch. Up the middle, Duran. Tosses to first. And one gone in the fourth as they get the leadoff man. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. So digging in, Adam Frazier. One down, base is empty. Ball, that's off the plate. On the ground to first, and that's just foul. Base is empty, one away. Top half of inning number four. Well, pretty clear to me, he was trying to go deep right there, but you got to get a pitch that you can handle. Left hand hitter waits. Out to short. And he can't come up with it. Looked to me like he kind of let the ball play him instead of playing the ball. And it just ate him off. The hands get stiff. And even the best infielders make these kinds of mistakes. You just have to learn from it and move on. Now it's the second baseman, Nick Lofton. Bounce to the left side. Wenzel on to Simeon. And their second double play of the day will end the fourth. One error in the inning, but nothing more. We're midway in the fourth. It's the Royals one and the Rangers nothing. in Arlington ready to go for the last half of the inning now here's the Rangers DH Corey Seager the 1-1 one -one. comes up empty that's strike two nowadays with advanced metrics and increased use of moving the infielders around defense isn't necessarily about making errors are you able to get to the ball are you able to position fielders where hitters hit the ball but within the new shift rules struck him out looking well, just couldn't pull the trigger on the fastball right there, and I don't think he was taking it, thinking it might be a called ball or anything. I just think he was flat out frozen. Did not expect that location, in my opinion. 
in an area that goes unnoticed is the coach that's responsible for positioning and then uh, the research person that's providing the information. So what we're seeing in baseball, so many more people behind the scenes that are contributing to the success between the lines. Swing and a miss. Had him out front for the strikeout. Well, you see him trying to pull that inside pitch right there, and that's not the kind of approach that you want to have. Even if you do get to it, it's going to be very difficult to keep it fair. You're just going to make it a long strike at best. You have to be able to stay within the baseball on the inside of that path to it, and that way, if you're a little quick, the ball gets hit hard somewhere, and it's not foul. Here's Nathaniel Lowe. Up the middle, Lofton to first. Rangers go down in order. Nothing doing for the Rangers. Still behind by a count of one to nothing. Back at Globe Life Field, ready now for the fifth inning. So up now for Kansas City, MJ Melendez. Here's a 1 1. That one ripped, but foul. And a ball and two strikes. Next offering misses down and away. Action in the pen down there. Andrew Heaney, the veteran southpaw, is getting ready to come on if needed. Lorenzen, a hard-throwing right-hander, up as well. This to third, and that should be extra bases. And that rolls into the corner. Now he'll turn for second. In safely, it's a leadoff double in the fifth. Josh Smith and he'll be the injury replacement taking over third number eight and next up for the Royals Drew Waters man at second little chopper rolls foul and another ball Melendez leads off second with nobody out. Bounced up the middle. Simeon sends it to first. One away here in the fifth. That's a good piece of hitting right there. It's early, but you still want to move the runner up and give your team a chance to score. That's exactly what happened. So you better believe your teammates are happy with you after that at bat. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Jose Urania won't go any further, and he leads a runner at third. So we'll see how the next pitcher deals with that when we get back. A new arm into the game, the righty, Jose Leclerc. Well, he's been hit pretty hard at times this season, as you see with the big ERA. So this is an important outing for him to get on the right track. Here's the center fielder, Kyle Isbell. This is the classic manufacturing a run situation. A runner at third, less than two outs, and a golden opportunity to bring him home. The pitch. And he hits a ground ball right side. The throw to first. Run scores, and that makes it 2 nothing as they get the out. So the Royals batting order turns over. Now here's the leadoff hitter for the Royals. Next offering is down low. And that one fouled off.
on the ground to the left and foul ball. And here it comes. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Two down, nobody on. That one missed. Recognize that changeup right out of the hand. Just spit on it. Bobby Witt Jr. on deck for the Royals. Eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up. Switch through that one. It's a strikeout. But they push across one run. One hit. No errors. No one left. Last half of the fifth coming up. It's the Royals two and the Rangers nothing. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Stepping in, Wyatt Langford. One-one. In the air, right field. Waters tracks it down for the out. Digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Leody Tavares. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. The pitch. And another ball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Picks up strikeout number seven. Probably showing some pretty dominating stuff out there in this one. Not just in terms of swing and miss, but also in terms of command. You know, all those strikeouts that kind of speak for themselves, but when you don't walk anyone, you're demonstrating that you have the confidence in your abilities to truly go right after opposing batters. And stepping in is the speedy Ezekiel Duran. The shortstop takes a ball. The Royals leading by two, last half of inning number five. Liner, base hit. Only two hits allowed so far tonight, Boog, so I don't think that one will disrupt his momentum all that much. You know, he's really been on top of his game, commanding his pitches all night long. Runner at first with two away. Andrew Kisner stepping in for the Rangers. Two outs. Oh, he doesn't get the call. And that's ball three. Well, if he's going to steal second. You want him to go early in the count. That way he's not a distraction to the hitter at the plate. Go ahead and get it out of the way so the hitter can focus on the pitch. And the 3-1. Foul ball there. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. Swing and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. He continues to roll on the mound as five shutout innings are in the books. It's the Royals two and the Rangers nothing. And we're back. Here's the shortstop at the play. Bobby Witt Jr. The shortstop. You know, Boog, this is a player with some serious speed. In 2023, he became the first player in 20 years to record two infield hits and an inside-the-park home run in the same game. Some activity in the bullpen for Texas. Andrew Heaney up and loosening in the pen. Here comes a pitch. Fouls it off, still one and two. Go 
Holmes down, swinging for the strikeout. Slider got him for strike three. And here's the first baseman, Vinny Pasquantino. Base is empty one away, and we're the top half of the sixth. Swings through that one out in front that time. One ball, two strikes. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. The batter. And now the catcher comes up to him. Salvador Perez. Two down, nobody on. On the ground to third. Over to low. And it's a 1-2-3 inning. Three up, three down for him there. 9-1-2 scheduled to hit in the home half of the sixth. It's the Royals two and the Rangers nothing. Well, we go bottom six, go. and Order now Rangers. Josh Smith. The third baseman. He's not the power guy, but he can hurt you to all parts of the ballpark. Ball to strike. Right through there for a strike. The mark there, two and two. <laughs> Left hand batter waits. And that one is lifted in the air, settles underneath it, hauls it in for the out. And there's one away. Now back, second baseman. Marcus. So the batting order turns over. Simeon. Here's the second baseman, Marcus Simeon. The lefty fires. Swing and a line drive curling foul down the right side. The one two. Stays alive. One down, base is empty. Got it by him for the K. You're usually are going to see that inside fastball a little longer coming in from the opposite side, but that pitch really got in on him right there. I mean, that's a well-thrown pitch. Tough to do anything with that in terms of getting the hands through and the sweet spot of the bat to the baseball. Next offering is in for a strike. Good pitch to hit on a tee up in the zone. I think he was looking for something else right there. On the ground. In plenty of time to first... And Seeger is set down. That ends the frame. And the Rangers set down in order. They're still down. It's 2 zip. And welcome back to the ballpark. We go to the top of the seventh. So here's the Royals DH. Adam Frazier. Adam Frazier. Swing and a high fly ball down the left field line, but hooking foul. And a pitch. Cut on and missed. Struck him out. One away. Stood absolutely no chance on that slider right there. And I don't mean to laugh, but that's a tough one. I mean, pretty much a perfect strikeout pitch. I mean, it looks like a fastball middle end. Kind of has cutter action, and it just bunches you up to where you can't get your hands through and the barrel to it. And not much you can do unless you recognize the spin early and you spit on it. Nick Lofton steps in for the Royals. On the ground, right side. Gets it to first. And two away to start the seven. Now here is MJ Melendez. Two outs. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Been a solid inning so far in relief. Getting them through this inning only down two could give their lineup a real opportunity to just grind their way back into this game with the few outs that they have left. 
Two down, nobody on. Here in the top half of inning number seven. Another one, two. And there's a ball. Not even close there. Full count three and two. Two down, nobody on. And they'll do it again. Out towards right center. That's well struck. Tavares running hard to get him. Can't get there too slow to get after it. And he's there with a double. Just one of those at-bats you almost hate to see come to an end. Pretty much just a textbook double into the gap. And when you can drop one in there between the outfielders, you know you're making the turn at first. Just an excellent swing. Digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Drew Waters. And one and two. Melendez at second with two down. And he chases that one. And that'll do it. Royals lead one. But they hold the 2 nothing lead. Bottom of the seventh. And now the right fielder, Adolis Garcia. Makes a sliding stop. The throw. And very nicely done for the out. This defense came to play tonight. We're seeing some awesome pitching, but a huge part of this shutout so far has been the defense making great plays like that behind their pitcher. They feed off of one another, make great pitches, make great plays defensively. Nathaniel Lowe stepping in for the Rangers. In there. And so now one and two. The Royals up by two here at the bottom of the seven. Swing and that ball smashed on a line. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that quickly two away. Up next for the Rangers. No up here. Up next for the Rangers, Wyatt Lankford. Check swing, no appeal. Nice job to keep the hands back on that one. Out in front just a little bit. Next Ball offering upstairs. Well, just about to hit that century mark. A hundred pitches for this game. Line to left. And it stays fair. And that rolls into the corner. Around first, heading for two. And he'll pull in there with a stand-up double. Well, a swing like that can help you come out of this struggle. We saw the numbers coming into the ball game, but all he's trying to do at this point is help his team win. So, man aboard. Leody Tavares stepping in for the Rangers. The tying run at the plate. And that one hit to first. And it's just foul. That was close. At the belt and fires. Foul ball still a one and two count. These fans, they are ready to cheer about something. Tying run at the plate. That ball is foul, and the pressure is building. And a swing and a miss. 
and that is that. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and mess, and you walk off the field. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Jonathan Hernandez. Left-handed batter at the plate, and he's been excellent in those matchups this year. So this seems like a calculated move. And now the center fielder, Kyle Isbell. Not close with that one, and it's two and one. Movement in the bullpen, Andrew Heaney getting loose out there. Burke getting cranked up as well. Right-handed reliever. Fouls one off. Two and two. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. So the lineup flips over. Now here's the leadoff hitter for the Royals. Base is empty one away, and we're in the top of the eighth. The pitch. Swings and misses. Slider got him for strike three. Very strong coming out of the pen so far as he punches out the first two batters he's faced in this one. Getting straight to work. Man, it's talked about a lot, but relievers are just so electric these days. He's not fun at bats if you're a hitter. I'm so glad I'm retired. And a pitch. And another ball. On the ground to short, Duran slings it across. Royals set down in order. Royals bats are quiet there, but they're on top 2 nothing. Back in Arlington, bottom of the eighth. And now the shortstop, Ezekiel Duran. And now the lefty. Deep drive down the line. Foul ball. Oh, and that misses down. off the outside edge. It's a good take. Next Three offering ball. upstairs. Expect for that guy to come right at you with a fastball, something in the zone, because he does not want to allow the leadoff wall. Got him! Outside pitch got the better of him that time. This guy will throw any pitch in any count, 3-2. He goes off speed, gets the out. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Cole Reagans gives way, and he was a tough nut to crack. Pretty stingy from start to finish. Back with the new arm after a quick break. The new pitcher in the game, Chris Stratton. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect a tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. Here's the catcher to hit, Andrew Kisner. The Rangers trailing by two here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Pitch misses inside, counts full three and two. Swinging for the strikeout. Had him way out front of the slur. Now here is Josh Smith.
Two outs. Oh, that's a two. And that's a little bit high. And that's ball three. Marcus Simeon waiting to hit for the Rangers. And a 3-1 on the way. And a big swing and a miss. Well, in this one, the offense has sputtered. Somebody's got to find a way to get on, keep the line moving, and manufacture at least one run. Then maybe you get two or three. Two down, nobody on. That's a good at bat right there. He was down early in that plate appearance. Works the walk. One of the things about that two-out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or into the gap will produce a two-out RBI, and those are the best. That is if you are the offensive side of it. Tying run at the plate. Gets a piece and stays alive. Right-hander kicks, deals. Battling here as he fouls it away. That one way inside. To third and that chance handled zips it to first gets him easily ends the inning Rangers leave one they trail things here to nothing we're back it's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound Brock Burke and they felt it was time to bring on a left-handed reliever from the pin with the lefty hitter coming up I think it's a good move. I know I never liked when opposing teams did that to me. Vinny Pasquantino steps in for the Royals. Vinny Pasquantino. The wind and the pitch. Line drive, base hit. And at first, Salvador Perez steps in for the Royals. And he deals. That one missed. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Andrew Heaney appears to be getting loose. And it's a strikeout. And a strikeout for the first out here in the ninth. Next is the designated hitter, Adam Frazier. The pitch. There goes the runner. That one fouled off. Two and two. Hit in the air, left field. No trouble here, puts it away for the out. And there's two away. Up next to the Royals, the second baseman, Nick Lofton. And to the plate for Kansas City, Nick Lofton. Pasquantino leads off first with two down to the inning. And a pop-up, right side, foul territory. He's got it. And that is out number three. 
They get a leadoff single, but leave him stranded. Two, three, four, set to hit in the bottom of the ninth. It's the Royals two and the Rangers nothing. Back now as they hand the ball to a fresh arm to start the bottom of the ninth. James MacArthur. And he has some nasty breaking stuff. Number 66. James MacArthur. Now it's Corey Seager. All these fans definitely want to get involved in the game. All it's going to take is to get the leadoff man or even a base runner on. Ground ball left side and that squirts through around first and hustling for second and he greets the new arm from the bullpen with a double singy that's a start yeah as soon as that ball got through I could see down in the dugout players pumping their fists they know that they got a chance in this ball game So up next, Adolis Garcia. And another ball. Oh, an interesting situation. One swing, you can tie up the ball game. But if you're patient and work a walk, then you bring the game-winning run to the plate. Tying run at the plate. Ground ball up the middle. Oh, wow. nice play from his knees. The throw. Got him. Nice play. And that may have now saved a run. Great reaction there to get to the baseball, secure it, and then no time to get up and throw. Throws from one knee. That's a guy that's got a lot of confidence in his arm strength and accuracy. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Nathaniel Lowe. Lifted in the air down the left side. And there's two down. The batter, the left fielder, Wyatt Langford. Last chance now for the Rangers. Now the left fielder, Wyatt Langford. With the tying run at the plate. Here the last half of inning number nine. A little out front there as he swings through. The Rangers down to their final strike. It's 2-1. And now the tying run is into scoring position. Well, back within one as he brings home the run. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. New pitcher in the game for the Royals, Nick Anderson. Well, he's been a bit of a wild card out there in terms of throwing strikes. He's definitely struggled with free passes this year. Leody Tavares stepping in for the Rangers. So the tying run at second. And a count one and two. Well, if he's going to do something special right here, it's going to have to happen with two strikes. Anderson ready to work. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And that ends the ball game. The tying run left stranded at second. Well, at this point of the year, first day of the summer, teams are really starting to figure out who they are. No more excuses about cold weather or any inclement conditions. Now I think we'll start to see what this team is really made of as we move forward. And your final score here today, 2-1. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chubby. Thanks for joining us.